My Tesla Model S has autopilot. The car happily drives itself on many occasions. So first, what is autopilot? And second, more importantly, is it legal to use in the UK? Well, many EVs and ICE cars today have some degree of self-driving. First, let's look at what self-driving actually means, because it gets complicated with talks of level 1, 2 and 3 and 5 and autonomous. So let's simplify things. Almost all new cars, petrol, diesel and electric, already have some form of self-driving with cruise control. This is classed as a driver assist system, DAS, DAS, and as its name implies, assists and helps the driver, not replaces them. This cruise control merely offers the ability to set a particular speed, and the car will maintain that speed until switched off, or you touch the brake pedal. While on the motorway, this allows you to remove your feet from the pedals, it has two major problems. First, you need to keep your feet very close, just in case you need to take over. And second, it will just maintain your set speed, even if the car in front is going much slower. It would happily just crash into it. In motorway traffic with varying speeds, these systems need turning on and off so often that they are virtually useless. So most systems now offer adaptive cruise control. Again, another DAS, but a lot better. If you set 70 miles an hour on the motorway and you approach the car in front, which is doing 60 miles an hour, your car will slow down to match and, when it is clear, will accelerate back up to 70 miles an hour. No need for the driver to touch the pedals. It still has the two old problems and introduces two new ones. Uh, number one, still needs the driver to activate and deactivate it. And two, you still need to be watchful and keep your feet handy just in case. But it now adds number three. If your car has a manual gearbox and clutch and you're travelling at 70 mile an hour in, say, fifth gear, it cannot slow down very much before you need to manually change gear, which instantly deactivates it. Even in an automatic car, the systems typically dis disengage below a preset speed, often 40 or 50 mile an hour. Number four, if the traffic ahead stops, most systems just disengage. You will need to take over as you slow down below the cutoff speed, and when clear, accelerate back up to the cutoff speed before you can engage it again. Now, more advanced automatic cars and some EVs will have absolutely no lower speed limit. These cars can be set, for example, to 40 miles an hour while you're stationary at the traffic light in a queue of traffic, and your car will accelerate itself when the car in front sets off. It will accelerate to 40 miles an hour, or the speed of the car in front, whichever is lower, then slow down and stop at the next traffic lights. No driver input needed. Now, all the above systems require you to be alert, have your feet ready, watch the road and take over when necessary. They also need you to steer. ALKS, or Automatic Lane Keeping Systems, tackle that. In its simplest form, one or more cameras will look ahead and spot the white lines painted on the road and take over the steering so that the car remains in the middle between the lines. Again, you need to be alert and watch the road, ready to take over, but on clearly marked roads, they're really good, and you don't need to keep holding the steering wheel any longer. Many only operate on motorways. The more basic ALKS will disengage instantly if it can no longer see the white painted lines, and unfortunately our roads are very poorly marked in general. And of course, country lanes often have no light white lines at all. ALKS will not be available for activation under these circumstances. Also, many systems require really clear weather, no rain, mist or fog, or even some in bright sunlight, and many do not work at all at night. So moving up again, the top range cars have systems that link to GP, GPS and satnav, so they know where they are, they can handle roads with bad or no markings, and work in quite appalling weather conditions. Some also use the forward-facing camera to look at the car ahead and simply follow it, if there are no white lines at all. Let's hope they can see where they're going. 
Now, cars equipped with both adaptive cruise control and ALKS offer a really relaxed driving experience, where your role is really just to watch over the car in case it makes a mistake. They are driver assist, and so you need to use the, you never need to use them. It's not taking over, merely offering to relieve the boredom and muscle ache on longer journeys. They all have some form of driver awareness system where it needs to know that you're still there and alert. That is, in some, you need to touch the steering wheel in a particular place or ap apply very slight pressure at regular intervals. Others use cameras to track your eyes and determine your line of vision. Neither are foolproof. If all it took was for you to watch the road ahead, there would be no accidents. Just looking does not mean seeing potential or developing problems. It also still requires the driver to turn it on and off and take over if necessary. It is not self-driving. It would be dangerous to set adaptive cruise control to say 50 mile an hour and turn on the ALKS and then allow the car to carry on at 50 mile an hour when entering a village with a 30 mile an hour speed limit. So some cars also have speed sign recognition systems. A camera will spot the speed limit signs and, in most cars, set off an alarm or disengage the system, while in other cars the systems will slow the car down to the speed limit automatically with no input from the driver. And again, none of this is yet full self-driving, and indeed full self-driving does not actually exist yet. My 2016 Tesla Model S falls into this top tier category with its Tesla Autopilot. Although more basic when new, Autopilot has been updated with over-the-air updates continuously since then. Even today, I'm still receiving updates. So it does very much more now than when it was built and when I bought it. New models like the 3 and the Y offer much more in their version of Autopilot, and that version 2 will be updated on a regular basis to do more, better, in the future. Now, I don't have the time to cover the differences in this video. Maybe that's another one soon. But when Tesla or Ford or General Motors does launch full self-driving, and one day one of them will, what does UK law say about it? Well, in the UK, we're actually well ahead for once in having thought of this and already enacted several laws. That makes a change. Well, starting back in 2018, our government has been a bit of a world leader in legislation for EVs. Sad to say, its actions after passing the laws leaves an awful lot to be desired, and we now lag behind most other Western countries in all the passing laws. Great at talking, abysmal at actually doing what they talked about. Much more pressure is needed. The gist of the legislation, papers and committees, is that EVs are here to set stay. Sorry all those of you who think EVs are a flash in the pan, will soon fade away, and ICE cars will take over again. Your government doesn't agree. It says that fully autonomous cars are just around the corner and will offer huge advantages in safety, pollution and lives lost, along with new jobs in a booming tech industry. They will also shake up the delivery industry with fully autonomous vehicles taking over. I shall be following up this video with others in the series, looking much more deeply at specific leg legislation and report as they develop. If you're liking this video, by the way, please subscribe. It really does help. For now, our government is accepting EVs, current DAS, and eventually full self-driving when it is finally released. There is a requirement already in existence to list all vehicles approved for full autonomous self-driving in the UK with DVLA, together with any restrictions. The first, first such approval is reported in the media to be the Ford Mustang Mach-E. But then just go and read the small print. The government recognises DAS as needing driver intervention and monitoring and full self-driving as totally autonomous, no driver assistance or presence required. But Ford states that the Ford Blue Cruise, when activated and ready, will control steering, acceleration and braking of the vehicle with driver supervision and readiness to intervene on pre-qualified sections of divided motorways 
called hands-free blue zones while the driver's attention is on the road. So, first it will have a limited approval to use full self-driving, but only on the UK motorways and only on those that have been pre-mapped. And it requires the driver to be fully attentive at all times. So not fully self-driving at all, not autonomous at all, hugely restricted and not yet ready anyway. Hey, just a minute. My car, a 2016 Tesla Model S, already does all that. And I've actually been using it constantly for the last four years. Confused? Well, I am. Anyway, EVs are here to stay. The UK government believes that fully autonomous self-driving is just around the corner. Again, for you doubters, you can argue which system will win, whose and when, but one or many will soon appear on our roads here in the UK. Our government believes this will be by 2025. That's just 18 months away. Wow, is that a shock? Well, thanks for watching. I'm Dave.